Well, g'day everyone, and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video. Where today we are back out here, we are testing the Callaway 2023 Super Soft Golf Balls. Now, I've had these ones for a little while, haven't tested them yet, so I'm keen to get in and test them. Uh, I have tested the previous generations before, and I really did like the ball. I found that they were extremely long off the driver and the irons, but in and around the greens, that for me is where it kind of fell down a little bit. They just didn't have enough green side spin. However, Callaway have enhanced their green side spin, they've refined the ball. Why don't we see what they've got to say about this one and then let's get into the testing. Now this ball is probably one of the most popular balls on the planet. In fact, if you've hit some balls in the trees, it's likely that you've come out of the trees with a few of these bad boys in your pocket. Or you might actually hit some in the trees like myself. But either way, let's get into some testing. We're gonna start with some short chips here, just a 60 degree to one of these pins. Let's see how we go. All right, guys, so first chip off the rank. What we're gonna do, wow, that's a dirty wedge. I need to clean that. What we're gonna do, we're gonna just imagine that we've hit this shot, we've missed the green, it is dewy, so it's, it's not going to spin a whole lot, but we're just going to go for that middle pin, keep it nice and easy, and just get a bit of a feel for the balls and, and just see how they react. So 60 degree, little downhill, let's have a dip. Oh, they definitely pop up, but that's a pretty good chip. I'll tell you what, that's a really good start. That's right next to it if that didn't fall in the hole. It's pretty good also. Just a little short, they're definitely a lot more poppy off the face than say a Chrome Soft X or something like that. Yeah, wow, it's interesting with a soft feel. A lot of people talk about the softer balls about having a soft feel. I feel sometimes with a firmer ball, I actually get more feel or more response, but that's just me personally. A lot of guys love that soft feel and you can see that when you play for the rollout, and I'm not expecting these balls to spin, I think that's a bit of a trade-off between the budget price that they have versus say the premium balls, is that yes, they've increased the green side spin on the ball, but you can't really compare it to something like a Chrome Soft X. However, if you do play for that rollout, I mean, every single one of those are in tap-in range and a good chip. Let's come back the other way. We'll do some longer chips and see what the feel is like. We actually have to hit the wedge into it a little bit more. All right, so. Give myself a little bit of an awkward lie here with the stance just sort of on a hill, but this is a little bit of a longer chip. We're flighting it up. The green sort of comes uphill a little bit. So I can hit this one just a little bit harder, imagining that I've sort of just missed the green short and need to get up and down to the back pin, uh, which you'll see up there. Okay, so again, it pops up quite a lot in the air. It did stop a little shorter than what I expected though. So what I might try and do with this one is I might just try and hit like a little draw and just get the flight going down a bit more and see if I can control that. Yep, so I was definitely able to do that. You can see that roll out again. I am playing for that. I'm just not expecting these balls to spin a whole lot. So let's go again. That should be quite good, that one. Go, 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 go. Yeah, pretty good. So once you get used to the ball, once you get used to the spin of the ball, um, and, and how to actually play that and what sort of shots to play when using the ball. It's really effective. Alrighty, so we're now in the sand. Again, I've still got the 60 degree. And what we're gonna be trying to do is just see exactly how this ball reacts out of here. What I'm not wanting to see is I'm not wanting to see it just pop straight out of the face. Like I actually wanna be able to get some, some grooves onto this ball. So let's go to that same back pin, see how we go. Okay, not bad, it's a start. That was pretty good, honestly, I actually saw a little bit of spin there. It come out nice, it come out high and soft, which is what you kind of want with these sort of a shot. And it did have, I'm gonna say, a little bit of spin. Again, you gotta have the right expectations with these balls. You can't have the expectations that you're gonna see that grip and rip back and all of that sort of stuff, but anything is really quite good. 
I'm gonna bring it back to where there's a little bit less sand actually and see if I can kind of generate a bit more downforce and spin. The feel out of the bunker was pretty good. They all perform pretty well. They're all puttable. It gives me a chance of getting up and down from the sand. Do I feel like I had the same control as a Chrome Soft X or you know something like that, a Chrome Soft or even an ERC Soft? Well, look, probably not really. But the fact is that they're a budget ball. They're a lot cheaper. If you're somebody who's not just you know, a mad keen golfer who wants to go every single day like me and you just want to go out there, have some fun, or even someone who is a regular golfer, but just wants to go out and have fun. These balls could be perfect for you. All right, so we're now here in the sand. We have a long bunker shot, okay? Probably the most dreaded shot in golf, the 45, 50 meter bunker shot. And to be honest, my long bunker game like this is, well, kind of like everybody's, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe... That's a good start. You know, that's still really two putt territory, but I'll tell you what, from here, I'll take that. And that actually felt pretty good. That spun quite a lot. All right, so I give myself a pretty decent lie. I'm gonna throw it all the way back there and see if we can get this to spin back. Tell you what, that's a good shot. I mean, it bounced off the hill, and I'm not gonna say I 100% meant that, but it ended up being a good shot. And I gotta say, from this distance with a bunker shot, I don't know if it would make too much difference for me personally. I'm a three handicap with this ball or a premium ball because it's an extremely hard shot, and I'm not gonna say that I can control it at the best of times anyway. So I'd actually be happy with all of those results. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to get a feel for these balls off the putter. Now, the putting green is just up there. However, they've got some coaching going on, so I don't want to disturb that. So we're going to do it here. Now, as you can see, these pins there, they've got the little back markers in there. There's no holes there. But we're just going to aim for the pins and see how we go. I'm going to get these balls that are just hit. I do love the alignment line that's on the Super Soft. In fact, I wish they did this on the Chrome Soft X, but you can see that alignment line there. I absolutely love that. Just line this putt up and see how it goes. It's going to be downhill, so I'm expecting it to be quick. What I'm looking for in a ball is I don't want a ball to be really poppy off the face, okay? I don't want it to bounce. Work, pretty much. Okay, well I guess that was short because I expected it to be a little poppy, in all honesty. My putting is amazing. I don't think I had any of those actually anywhere near the hole from eight feet. Let's go again. Left to right. That's really good for pace. I'll take that as a lag putt any day. That's a nice roll. That's going to go in. Hit it. Boom. There we go. My putting's better from 35 feet than it is from eight feet. That's going to go in as well. I reckon that would have gone in if there was a cup there. That's two out of three, by the way. Yeah, feeling pretty good about my putting now. What to make of the balls from the short game stuff? Honestly, the short game is gonna be the biggest test for me personally, because the short game on the balls in previous generations, I've found that's where it really fell down. I mean, it was great off the tee, super long off the tee. In fact, I think last time I tested the older version, it was like 10 meters further on driver, you know, which is about 11 to 12 yards further with driver and the irons as well, but I just couldn't get the green side spin. Now, there are some things that you'd have to get used to if you're coming from a premium ball like me, like there is a little bit more pop off the wedges, but like you can see, if you can just gauge the roll out a little bit, you're gonna still get great performance out of these balls and you're gonna save yourself some money on the back pocket, which balls in golf, let's be honest, they're only getting more and more expensive. People are looking for cheaper, more suitable options for their golf game so they can still come out and enjoy the beautiful game of golf without the budget of, you know, like $100 around for a box of balls. So, let's get into the simulator now. We're gonna go and hit some iron shots, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit some drives as well and compare it against the Chrome Soft X and see just how the numbers pan out. Let's do it. All right, so. Gap wedge first. My ideal numbers with the gap wedge is probably around about 100 meters of carry to 105 and around about 9,000 to 9,500 spin. Let's hit a couple. It's a good start. 
It feels, I tell you what, they launch so high, these balls. Because they're soft, they just, they really do just fly off the club face. So if you're struggling with a little bit of height and you're, a, you know, a, a mid to high handicapper and you just keep hitting it too low, this ball could be the perfect ball for you. And bang on that number, 106, what have we got spin? 9,500. That's in a really good range for a ball that, to be honest with you, I didn't think spun that much. Okay, let's go again. Probably almost the exact same shot. 105 meters of carry, 9,600 spin. And that one is again, bang on that number. So that consistency there is really good. Spin 9,848 and carry at 106. So, all right, so taking a look at the numbers, they are so close in actually every one of those strikes. I mean, launch degrees, 31, 30, 30. So that's a great characteristic of a ball. It's not one that's not going higher, one's not going lower. Uh, ball speed was much the same as well. Spin was, I mean, you're, you're talking within 300 RPMs on a full wedge shot, which is just really, really good. And carry distance differential is only one meter, um, and that was one shot. So to me, that's really good. And then if we just take a look at the total average, we've got an average backspin, 9,682, and an average carry of 106 meters, which again, like I said, is pretty much bang on my number. So for me, big tick there with a full wedge. If you're gonna be, you know, within 100 meters of the green, you're gonna be able to hit this ball and know that it's gonna stop and spin, okay? Uh, I think a lot of people do get scared of that with, I'm gonna say budget balls, because even though it's a good quality ball, it's still a budget ball. It's Callaway's budget ball. It's to help you get into golf, not spend an arm and a leg on golf balls and go out there and have some fun. So it is one of their cheapest in the range, but it is a fantastic ball. And from that range, it's just gonna sit and stop, really. I mean, you got nearly 10,000 spin. It's not gonna do anything else. So I would expect this on, depending on how I strike it, it's gonna be interesting because my swing has been a little bit all over the place lately, but I should be expecting this from about 147 to about 153, 154 meters of carry. I'm gonna say that was absolutely middle. I kind of got that just a, a hair low groovy, but not too bad. Whoa, 159 meters of carry. 121 ball speed, that's a quick ball. It's gonna be interesting when we get to the driver test here because I have noticed on course when I used the previous generation of this ball that it was a really, really long ball. But anyway, that's one shot. Okay, away she goes. What do we got here? 156. It's a little bit left, but again, 5,730 spin. I'm pretty happy with that. 120 ball speed, 85 mile an hour club speed. It's a little bit slower than what I normally am, but that's me. That's got nothing to do with the ball. Okay, that one's away. That's a nicer shot. 156. It's actually getting a little bit of distance. Here's a lot, the lower spin characteristic is starting to come in. 4,900 for me with an eight iron is probably just too low. That was nice. That was probably the best strike shot of the lot. So let's see where this one goes, because that was what I would call a pure strike. So that's the best that I've got. It's got 156, spin 5,494. It's a very consistent ball. Ball speed again, 120. That was hit good. That was hit really good. Again, one of the better ones, those last couple of strikes are really good. 154, I'm guessing I got that, yeah, a bit more spinny. So I'm really happy with the performance of all of those shots. I mean, that's probably the best set of shots that I've hit in a little while. Just for starters, I'll throw up the actual numbers here on screen. So you can see the ball again is showing really great consistency. There's only one there that I got a little bit low spinny. Again, that was probably me. And it's the only one that also has 118 ball speed as opposed to 120 or 121. So I'm gonna take that one out, call it a bit of an anomaly. And we range from 5,494 to really 5,700. And then I had a bit of a high spinner there on the last shot, which I did flush, I hit it really, really good. So average spin of 5,784, ball speed is pretty much the same. Carry distances range from 154 to 159. That could be strike dependent. I'm hitting an eight iron as well. So you're bound to see a, a greater carry differential there than what you would with a, a gap wedge. But I'm super, super stoked and happy with that. And if we show the averages, 121 mile per hour ball speed, uh, launch at 24 degrees, which is a little bit too high for me, I think with an eight iron, but average backspin, 5,784, I'm happy with that. And a total carry of, 
oh sorry, a, a carry of 156 meters. Again, this bull at the moment is ticking the boxes. It, it really is, it's impressive, it's impressing me. And what I'm gonna do in the next test is I'm gonna take it outside, we've got the driver test, and I'm gonna compare it to a Chromesoft X ball as well with the driver to see, you know, what advantages or disadvantages are there for somebody who may not be playing every single day that doesn't wanna spend the money on a top tier premium ball like a Chromesoft X? Are they really losing out on much by going to something like the Super Soft? Or is it just better for them to save a few bucks enjoy the round get a cheaper box of balls if you lose them it doesn't matter as much and just have some fun but either way let's get to the driver that was an early click let's let's get to the driver all right guys now we are here this is the final part of the test with the Callaway Supersoft 2023 balls and let me tell you it has been pretty impressive up until this point but this is the one that we're all excited about the driver test we want to know how far does this ball go compared to a premium ball so the way that I'm going to do this I've got the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro there I have the RPT ball which is a Callaway Chromesoft X and thanks to Rapsodo Ball Dots I've actually got the exact same pattern that I can put as you can see over the Supersoft golf ball so that we we can get accurate measured spin data out here with driver to compare one against another. So why don't we get into it, we're going to hit three or four good shots with each, we're going to compare the numbers and see where they land. Here we go, we got the Chromesoft X up first, which is the RPT ball, okay? Let's see how this goes with three or four good shots. Okay, so what do we got there? It's a bit of a loosener, but either way. We've got 256 carry, we'll get a lot further than that. We might delete that one, that was the first, first shot, but nevertheless, it's a shot and it's down there. <coughs> Didn't really get that one either, but amped up the swing speed. That ball speed will get up to around about 170. I'm not gonna delete any of these because it's important to kind of leave them in there in case that's just how I'm swinging today. That felt better. Yeah, there you go, 170 ball speed. That's a lot better. That's more like it. And what do we have? I've got to say, the Chrome Soft X is one of the best feeling balls that I've personally used. So, 269, 287. I don't know where that T just went. So we'll do, if I get one like that again, we'll just do one more with the RPT ball. That is really good. And what do we got? 276. Okay, cool. So, we've got some shots there. We'll delete the first couple. We'll keep those last three. Now it's time to jump into the super softball. You honestly almost don't even feel the ball coming off the face. It's just so soft. It just like, just goes. 268. Okay, that's there, thereabouts. Just broke the T. Okay, 166, yeah, that ball speed was down a bit, so being a softer ball, I guess it is going to be hard to get the same amount of ball speed out of it, but four mile an hour, the first one was 170. I need to go find another tee, but I think it's got more in it than 166. Uh, 165.5, so the distance is still good though, but I am struggling to get that ball speed out of it. We're going to... Just hit a couple more and see if that's consistent. I don't feel like I absolutely middled it. You can see the smash, 1.43, so give it a chance. That was hit good. That's about as good as I've got, and I got 168 out of it. So the smash factor can go down because I can be over compressing the ball. So that can also be another thing, but I don't think that I can literally hit a ball better than that. And I've got 168 ball speed as opposed to what I was getting out of the other ones. I think was 174, so Let's just take a look at the numbers. Uh, we might delete these first two from the Chromesoft X because I was, you know, warming up with those ones. Average ball speed there is 173 with an average club head speed of 115.6. There's one in there at 114. Like I said, I was probably still just warming up. So take that with a grain of salt. Uh, club speed on the Supersoft was 117.5, so I'm getting much quicker as I'm warmed up. And the ball speed, interestingly, was 167.5. So if I swung with the same club speed with the Chrome Soft X, you could arguably say that I could get that ball speed up to probably 174. And the carry distance is shorter by about seven meters, 7.7. .7. And the total distance is much the same. Smash factor, like I said, is worth mentioning because I was probably over compressing the ball. Um, and you can see there, there's even one at 1.39 if I take that out it's not going to hinder the averages in terms of distance and club speed too much but the smash factor on average is 1.44 against 
Um, then if we go into the spin rates, what do we see? 24, 16 versus 1836. So realistically, the Chrome Soft XME sits in a perfect spin window, 2400, 23, 2400. 1800 spin for me is, is just too low. Um, I mean, but that's because, um, like I said, I'm over compressing the ball. It's a softer ball instead of a harder ball. It's a less spinning ball against a ball that is very much high spin. So, you know, in terms of a ball for me, it's not, it's not the ball for me. But there is a market that's gonna suit this ball a lot better than I would in terms of having a slower swing speed, getting better compression on the ball, more compression uh, in a lot of cases than guys that are trying to use something like a Chrome Soft X if they don't have the swing speed. So that's worth taking into account and definitely worth going getting a ball test done for yourself just to see the differences that you would produce and whether it's worth it just looking at this option, saving yourself a few bucks, going into more of a budget option. It's the most popular golf ball literally in the world. So it's popular for a reason. It hits a budget price. It performs really well. You're not losing a massive amount of distance. I mean, let's be honest. And they all stayed straight in the fairway. So what more can you ask for? But look guys, that's it from me today. I hope you love that. If you do, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Throw a comment in the comment section. I'll get back to every single comment that's in the comment section. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.